So today, we just wanted to spend some time kind of sharing some of our product uh, and technology development journey. Um, the, the conference at large is just going to be a, a wealth of great insights and information, best practices, lessons learned. And, uh, and we wanted to kind of contribute some of our own to the conversation. What I'd like to do is, is maybe just have a conversation and to the extent that I say something that um, triggers a, a question or sparks an idea, um, feel free to just kind of weigh in, but uh, I'd love to kind of get some of your thoughts as we're going through here. Um, but uh, again, I lead the, um, the open innovation team for GE. We call this team Genius Link. And we named it Genius Link because we are um, basically committed to connecting GE missions, GE product and technology development missions with experts around the world who are um, interested in solving some of these problems with us. We believe that um, basically the, the speed of innovation is accelerating at an increasing pace. Um, the, uh, we have cribbed shamelessly from, uh, from someone who needs no introduction here at the conference, but this is one of Ray's quotes. But um, we're, I think we're all seeing a, a pretty similar pattern in the market today. So the speed of innovation is accelerating. Um, we're, we're seeing the introduction of a lot of new technologies, um, a lot of new business models as a result of this. We're seeing a change in the way people are living we're seeing a change in the way that businesses are operating. And this is really, for all of us, um, a brave new ground. We're, we're all, in, in many respects, trying to figure out really what that digital thread means for all of us. As companies, as universities, and as individuals, how does the digital era um, speak to us and inform the, the path ahead? Because really, um, what we're talking about is, is not just, um, there, there are voices now in the fray that are not just human voices. But now machines have a voice. Machines are coming online. Machines are having a conversation. They're becoming um, part of the conversation for business. Um, they're becoming part of the, uh, basically, the, the conversation about how business can be optimized. and um, and robots, right? The robotic process automation, um, the automation of equipment, the automation of process is changing the way business gets done. So really anywhere you look in the operating landscape today, the world is changing. The way business gets done is changing. Um, technology is informing a lot of that. And, uh, and we're able to improve the, uh, the quality of life and the quality of work around the world. The human experience is being elevated and accelerated and expanded. So what does that mean? Uh, for GE, um, just kind of um, personalizing this, GE is on a journey of its own, really um, transforming our identity from a, an industrial company with 125 years of developing and safeguarding and, and uh, launching new intellectual property, new solutions, new, new value models for the markets that we serve, we're now shifting into a um, basically a digital industrial company. And together we're figuring out what that means for us and that, what does that mean for the markets that we serve. So we, we feel um, very much um, that we have a responsibility for basically imagining things others don't, and building things that others can't, and delivering outcomes that make the world better for all of us. So again, just bringing it back to the topic for today, we wanted to focus on one of those, um, one of those big kind of key trends that we're investing in that will enable that digital industrial journey. So um, here again, we believe at Genius Link, GE's Genius Link team, we believe that we're basically living in a crowd power world. All of us have heard about new business models like Uber, like Airbnb. Um, we're seeing new technologies and new business models emerge that make it not only possible, but almost business essential to 
engage in a more collaborative form of business opera operations. We're, we're seeing that um, we're seeing a very strong integration into our, our operating models of the crowd, the cloud, and AI. The crowd, the cloud, and AI are all coming together to enable much greater speed, much greater um, diversity in solution sets, and much better efficiency in the way business gets done. And once again, for GE, we're, we're basically investing in these technologies and business models in order to improve the outcomes for our teams and for our customers. Driving things like brilliant manufacturing, uh, predictive analytics, um, transforming the way we work and optimizing the way we work and accelerating the innovation systems that, uh, that we are supporting. So this has been our journey. Um, this has been a, um, a pretty fun cycle for us. We, um, as a company, we, we started 125 years ago um, with a very um, kind of strong stewardship of IP. So we had innovation systems that were safely protected, you know, safeguarded. We worked with our teams, our suppliers, our customers in closed quarters and developed new products, new services, and launched those to market. In the past 10 years, we've seen the, the ability to access expertise on demand, and we've started to experiment with the on-demand expertise models. And in doing so, we've extended the reach of our innovation systems. Um, today, we are now at the point where we are able to crowd power business, and we'll talk about what that means. But we are building models where we're effectively um, establishing a, a means by which we can leverage core resource or these, um, these expert networks as a core component of our resourcing strategy. And that in turn is, is now informing what we believe is a future of work that is crowd powered and tech enabled. That's the journey we're on. Right now we're, we're at the step where we're crowd powering our business and looking very clearly at what we believe the future of work will be for GE as a digital industrial company. So once again, the journey's been fun. It, it, uh, it's moving very quickly. And so, um, you know, 1892, the GE you know, in 2012, as recently as 2012, we started experimenting with these on-demand expert systems, um, experimenting with open innovation, with crowdsourcing, and then just very quickly uh, clipping through a scaling process to um, validate the models and develop scalable and compliant models to crowd power our, our business. And we've done so really over the course of um, sponsoring several hundred crowd power projects throughout our own business and supporting um, the, the customers that we serve. And, uh, and we've done so in a way that um, enables us to now offer those same crowd-powered services to our external customers. So it's been a process to scale a crowd-powered system, and it's really, um, it's happened over the past five years. Um, we apply, just super fast, we apply the crowd-powered business model to basically the full range of work that GE teams do. And, um, and in support of customer needs as well. But if you think about holistically the GE operation, you generally speaking have your professional services and, and business oper um, office operations, and then you have your product and technology development operations. And we've been able to successfully apply the crowd-powered model to the full spectrum of that work, working on um, you know the strategic crown jewels, things like um, strategy development, um, business planning, um, financial process modeling and automation, and then reaching into our manufacturing operations most recently. So we'll talk about um, a few examples, but um, we have been able to test and experiment and build crowd-powered solutions that really will help the entire range of our business operations. To do this, we have um, We've built a network of networks, basically. We, uh, we believe that really the, um, the talent available to us is not only found within the GE employee base or the GE supplier base. We believe that 
that there are experts around the world that are not only um, great collaborators and potentially interested in collaborating with our teams, but also basically have the, the requisite expertise in order to solve better outcomes for our customers. So we work with um, a multitude of expert networks, um, some of whom are here today. Um, you, I think many of you may have heard from one of our partners earlier, a company called Local Motors. They're one of our key partners in this expert network. But we work with a, a number of expert networks in order to knit together a network of networks that extend the reach of the GE team. Our team is effectively um, very focused on um, dissolving the boundaries between us and them. We're trying to um, invite the world, whether that the world is a, a basically a base of GE employees or um, individuals outside of the GE employee base or universities or companies. We're basically trying to invite the world to join the GE team on a virtual basis through this process. We're able to do so um, with a very well-established process. So our team has, over the past several years, built up a process that is compliant. Everyone asks about IP. Everyone asks about confidentiality. Um, those are well-established protocol in our gover governance system. What we focus on is helping teams who have business problems very quickly, very easily, in a very um, effective manner match those business problems up with experts around the world who can help them drive a better outcome. So who's in our crowd? I mentioned a network of networks. We have, um, in our current network, we have reached to over 7 million solvers around the world. Um, once again, these are individuals, universities, and corporations. Um, we have a, a basically a very actively engaged base of GE employees. So GE's employee base around the world is over 300,000. Over 100,000 of those employees are actively plugging into our innovation process on a regular basis to help solve for these innovation missions and crowd power missions that, um, that we're supporting. So again, it's, just, it's, um, it's an opportunity to match business problems, business priorities with expert networks in a much more um, efficient manner than um, traditional resourcing approaches. The, the process to crowd power the business um, removes some of the constraints of traditional resourcing that, um, that are, that are um, defined by human resourcing and sourcing. If you think about those two functions, we're able to reach those two networks of experts and much more efficiently um, match the, the operating teams with experts who can help them drive better outcomes. So, I mentioned seven million experts. Um, that's just the starting point. And basically, we're we're able to recruit experts on a uh, on a mission basis. I wanted to talk to you today about um, really kind of specifically applying that business model to product and technology development. And um, I'll just clip through a couple of uh, case studies. I'm not going to go through all the detail. I'm just going to let you kind of read this on page behind me, but. In this particular case, we were working with the aviation team and um, helping them reimagine product development, product design with the onset of additive manufacturing. And, uh, and they were interested in understanding, A, how expert networks could um, be effective in product design, and B, how they could reimagine their product development process with the, uh, the possibility of um, converting to additive. In this particular case study, the expert networks responded um, in, uh, in full force, generating over 700 designs for this particular mission. And the winning design was produced by someone who had zero aviation experience. They were able to maintain the specifications and um, reduce part weight by 84.6%. So it was an extraordinary outcome. It was both inspiring and humbling for the aviation team. It was. Um, it was a great example where if you just um, reach out with the right mission statement to the right expert networks, then, uh, then you can drive really amazing outcomes for your customers. Next case study also with the aviation team, this one was on data science. Um, once again, we were trying to test 
the ability of expert networks to drive a better outcome. And in this particular case study, the expert network was able to surpass what the um, aviation industry was using to predict the arrival of flights at that time. The, the expert network beat the industry benchmark by 39%. Here again, it's just a, a great example of how crowd powering kind of surgically applied to business missions and innovation priorities can really drive extraordinary outcomes if crafted well and executed well. Um, I'm going to skip over this particular case study um, just in the interest of time, but this particular website was produced in eight months um, by an expert network for a team that had zero development or hosting capabilities. They had a great idea and a budget and a timeline, and we filled in the rest with an expert network. So we, we took the project from ideation to launch for them. Um, the, um, the business model can be applied just real quickly on a systemic level. And so the examples that I just provided were individual kind of product development priorities. But I wanted to show you kind of the range of how you can kind of scale this into a full kind of core operating system for your business. And, um, and we've done that with the launch of Fuse in March. Fuse is for GE a, um, a crowd powered business model applied to the front end of manufacturing. So Fuse combines a basically an online expert network with a physical microfactory operation, both of which are designed and built based on the Fuse sponsor's priorities. And Fuse enables the, the sponsor to basically accelerate their product and technology development process by 40 to 50 plus percent. It does that by putting the crowd to task on research, ideation, design, rapid prototyping, and helping with small batch manufacturing and validation. So that chasm today that exists between a great new product idea or a great new technology and full-scale production has just been collapsed with the introduction of Fuse. Fuse is, um, is basically a blueprint that our team has developed that allows business leaders to establish on a, on a very rapid basis you can basically upfit an existing manufacturing site, or you can stand up and, um, and basically launch a new manufacturing site that is Fuse enabled. But the, the community, the expert community, is a core component of the operating team for the front end of the manufacturing process. Um, Fuse is also a really an ideal center for collaboration with customers and suppliers and experts who you may not have an opportunity to interact with or work with on a regular basis. Fuse becomes really um, a, a magnet, if you will, for collaboration and innovation. And it's, um, it's a way to not only produce the innovation priorities that are important to your business or to your customers, but it can also be a great kind of maker mentor space so that you're um, exposing your future leaders right, and your, your future workforce, maybe in um, local university programs, to the innovation priorities that are important for your business. And you can start to build relationships with kind of the, the leadership um, that you want to recruit into your business. So with that, I'm, uh, I'm out of time and I'm going to wrap it up there, but um, hopefully you've found some of our journey and some of our experience at least interesting, if not helpful. But uh, I really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot.